Alright, cheers to the third encounter against Clan Havoc that the Alliance was able to see to this afternoon with the time allotted for our group and for Havoc's group. And so, good game all the same. So, without further ado, let us go in here and go into the general reevaluation of the clan battle like we always got this going. Let's start with round one. That was Capture the Flag. Um. That was on uh, Havoc's host, I believe, in our map pick, which was for Corrosion. Because Venom and Golden Prime and Q picked that. And also, for a good note here, this was Princess Q's first time, as she was able to also respectfully represent the Alliance in her, um, in her first clan battle for the Alliance. As before this, she had played for the Rebels of Kaon, as she was the second-gen leader of the Rebels of Kaon. And then after Rebels went down, she's when she joined on board to us, and so she was able to play here in her first clan battle with Havoc. And here she was very well effectively interpreted into the clan outline that I had set for Havoc here. As she went ahead and, be and became the runner, her and I believe Venom both tag teamed in doing the, the runs. If not her, then they switched off to Golden Prime Midway. In the Capture the Flag session, that one started off already in Havoc's favor as the momentum shifted in their favor right away. Because I believe they scored a, a they scored a flag touchdown right at the beginning of it somewhere. Mm, I changed it up myself in order to try out a couple of builds before I switched over to a general barrier destroyer. So I tried out a hover destroyer, predominantly in this clan battle, to try it out and see where it would go. But it didn't last that long. I originally did try it out in a past clan battle that the Alliance had, but it was to very little success rate that I was able to actually utilize it as said other person kept switching into Destroyer without saying anything, and so I had to switch that mindset to another class choice as I switched to other rules. But barring that, I feel that the decision that I made in doing a Hover Destroyer main until I had to switch off to a Barrier Destroyer was somewhat effective. The clan combination at that point was to stick to the buddy system layout and play off of each other in a very unique coordinated fashion as they were able to effectively do for the most part. As a lot of nice team combinations were able to happen to score numerous different opportunities to try and get the flag. It was just getting the flag that was the main part that proved to be very difficult and tedious at a number of different times. Um, in the end, I believe Havoc did win that one at a score of 3-2. to two. The funny part about that is that it could have been 3-1, to one, but it was 3-2 to two because right at the last second, right as the game was over, the last touchdown was, ha was made possible by Golden Prime, which automatically brought the score right up to 3-2. and two. It Surprised everybody because I was like, just, wow. You, you, you got the touchdown at literally the last second. And it was just so amazing the way that happened. I was I was really happy that, about that. Moving on next into round two, which was the conquest mode. That was on AOC's host and Havoc's map pick, which was Bowels, if I do recollect correctly. Here they made their own switcheroos in order to switch out a couple people to switch in Arclight 1 and Jacob the Usher on uh, Havoc Raven account. Good seeing Jacob again. I haven't seen him in a good while since the GEF outline. For that clan battle here, this one was the double cap method as they already got down lock, stock, and barrel, which is the same technique that we had outlined always for this for doing conquests outline. There, though, I gotta give the props to Havoc again as the pressure mounted considerably against the Alliance's favor as... Jacob was going heavy and Ark went heavy and Ark's heavy was astronomically stacking kills and basically being supported by the medic turning it into like a very opportune glass cannon of sorts. And then right at the last second I keep hearing snipes go off and then that's why I found out that Jacob actually switched to scout at the last second in order to get all of the most BS headshots of all time that all conveniently flowed the momentum further back into Havoc's favor. Uh, and on top of the power stacking and 
the sniping it got very, very annoying. But the point was made as everybody was able to sustainably hold their own long enough to catch the points back up in our favor, almost to where we could turn the game back, but we weren't able to turn the game back. Conquest did end ultimately in Havoc's favor, which was match point. And then finally in round three, which was the Team Deathmatch. Team Deathmatch was also AOC's host. There the vibe was a little bit different, so I changed up the strategy outline in order to try and give everybody else different roles since, but everybody else still wanted to try to generally stick to the same roles that they had and then just uh, mix up how they would execute the rules. Uh, for me, I, I guess I stuck with Destroyer for the most part, and the other Destroyer there, I believe, was Golden Prime. Uh, for that one there, the match had a very consistent flow that went back and forth, but it still stayed in their favor with the support for the response time for their medic, and the response time on the sniper support in order to pick off shots here and there which caused us to be suppressed into the buildings rather than being out in the open to be a lot more combatively widespread which again i gotta give credit to jacob on the sniper support for the havoc side from what it is i could see right away from the visual observation sniping is definitely a forte of his and he's very good at it and so him picking his shots was not overly surprising because hell, there was even a lot of times where he keeps screwing with me and constantly kept annoying me a lot, which kept throwing my game off. So, I mean, I can't only do but so much without getting annoyed, and then when I get annoyed, I start messing up. Unfortunately for me, it seems to be when I get, keep getting sniped at. And so, I gotta get props where it is due. Oh my god, now I gotta take this call. Okay. Alright, I gotta wrap this up here. So anyway, I wanna say good games all the same. And I'm going to definitely give props to Jacob the Usher and to Arclight1 where it's due. Because that's a hell of a good sniping. And that's a hell of a good Titan that I see that Arclight's skills have somewhat combatively progressed into. And I'm glad to have seen that happen as it did. Anyway, until next time when the Alliance is able to do battle, you guys have a good one ahead. And as always, till all are a one.